So we'll take the roll. Let's call the roll. Walt. Here. Walt present. Walters. Alquist. Here. Alquist present. Ashburn. Present. Ashburn present. Padilla. Present. Padilla present. Senator Onestat, uh, SB 939, Income Incorporation Tax Credits, the Oroville Enterprise Zone. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, another Enterprise Zone bill. Yes. I was happy to hear that the pro tem uh, wanted to only modify but not eliminate the, pro the, pro the program, which means my bill uh, serving rural community will fit very nicely into Good. Uh, the uh, overall discussion. SB 939 is designed to improve the attractiveness of the Oroville Enterprise Zone by allowing businesses with unused hiring tax credits to sell those credits to other businesses. The bill sponsored by the City of Oroville and supported by a large number of local businesses. Many of those companies have made the trip down here today as have local officials in the interest of time I'll cut my statement short, allow them to make their brief presentations, and I want to thank the committee and uh, the consultant uh, for um, uh, a lot of good advice and a lot of good work. I looked at the uh, the uh, uh, recommend or the the uh, uh, analysis by the committee. Thought it was very fair, and actually thought it was a over overall a very positive analysis for the bill, uh, and that. Uh, uh, the only problem that I could see was the overall general discussion about what uh, uh, you folks are going to do with enterprise zones. I would make this one comment, and that is uh, a small rural enterprise zone that uh, we have in this bill uh, does have a significant impact on hiring and new jobs in our community, despite other problems that other enterprise zones might have that might make you think about wanting to redo the program or modify the whole program, it's working in Oroville and I would like uh, favorable consideration today on this bill. With that, I'll stop talking and let uh, the folks from my local area take over. Okay. Senator Ronestad, if I could just make a, a very brief comment. Um, I think you're, I, I appreciate what you said about the analysis. Um, this is an unusual committee. It's both a policy committee and a fiscal committee, ultimately. So that's why we have this issue with suspense and how, how much things cost. Um, on the policy, um, we're not opposed to enterprise zones, uh, neither is the staff. Um, so the, the uh, analysis would be, I think, um, fairly favorable. The issue is also, and the one that we act on, at least to begin with, is the uh, revenue issue. Sure. So that's what, um, there are two parts of this for, and for this committee. And we do know that with the okay. uh, Franchise Tax Board, they did have some recommendations to lower the cost. We mm -hmm. have no objections to any of those recommendations, and uh, right. if that would help the committee with a favorable vote. Mm -hmm. And, in, so and in, when it goes to suspense, that's exactly where that kind of discussion will happen. So um, I would like to hear from those in support, and thank you for coming down. Who's first? Madam Chair and committee members, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes, you're fine. My name is Ken Harlan. I'm a second generation pharmacist. I own Robert's Drug Store in Oroville. Um, my father began that pharmacy in 1946. I also own Olive Pharmacy. My uncle began that in 1936. Uh, we became familiar with income uh, with uh, enterprise zone tax credits about four years ago um, and we did go back we did go back and uh, get those monies uh, that uh, uh, that you've been speaking about I think what I want to bring to the table today is tell you what I did with those monies so that you have uh, uh, a real world kind of explanation for those kinds of credits. We have 38 employees between the two units. We offer full dental and medical benefits. We offer retirement. And as of three years ago, profit share. Uh, part of the reason that we started profit share was directly related to these enterprise zone tax credits because it created more money at the end of the day for us. 
We also used, uh, we have not uh, fired any employees, even though uh, pharma pharmacy is very grievous right now in terms of revenue. Um, we have a number of single moms who work for us that are no longer on uh, assistance. We have used that money to um, uh, decrease the cost of health insurance for our employees. They pay $50 uh, uh, a pay period, $100 a month. Um, as I mentioned, we use that to create uh, a profit share. We also used, uh, used it to not actually let anybody go. And uh, we also used it to create additional clinical programs. Uh, uh, for example, we're an HIV pharmacy, and we have a compliance program that is a program where we actually lose on because of the cost of, uh, of the compliance, but we fund it with some of this um, uh, money that we get returned from us from the inter inter enterprise zone credits. Now, we don't use all our zone credits because we don't make enough money to do that uh, because of decreased revenue. And if we could utilize some of those unused uh, credits, then we actually can uh, uh, continue to not only benefit our employees, but also uh, increase technology to the pharmacy, uh, um, increase more clinical programs. Um, and so these are, are kind of real life uh, dynamics where these income ta these enterprise uh, credits are used. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. In support, welcome. Thank you. Happy birthday, Madam Chair and, uh, <laughs> Thank you. and uh, committee members. My name is Dan Srof. I'm the Vice President of Operations for Pacific Coast Producers. Um, Pacific Coast Producers, also known as PCP, was formed as a cooperative in 1971 by a group of tree fruit growers and tomato growers who purchased facilities including the Oroville Processing Plant from Stokely Van Camp. PCP has operated the Oroville plant ever since and has grown to be a, become a premier private label um, you know, store brand and, and food service processor of, of fruits like peaches and pears, grapes, what have you, tomatoes. The Orville facility's productive capacity is expanded from 2 million to 11 million cases per year. And along with that, the employment in this disadvantaged area of Orville has increased from 65 to 150 year-round employees and 1,150 seasonal employees. These employees are represented by the Teamsters California State Council of Food Processing and Cannery Union. Uh, once they reach their vesting benchmark, each employees enjoy medical, vision, and dental benefits as well as uh, retirement pension benefits. The average wage rate of these full-time employees is now $22 an hour. In the last five years, PCP has spent more than $12 million in capital expenditures um, to improve the Orville facility, to add new products and associated processing equipment that allows us to process a longer extended season and to produce more products. It has also allowed us to um, improve our wastewater pipeline and to meet various regulatory requirements that are placed upon us. The projects demonstrate, uh, I believe, the PCP's long-term commitment to the Orville community and uh, we really hope to do more. Okay. And support? Madam Chair and committee members, my name is Mark Wallman. I am the uh, Chief Financial Officer of Pacific Coast Producers and accompanying Mr. Shroff here today in support of uh, SB 939. PCP is an agricultural marketing cooperative, and as such, we have a different tax pro profile than, than your normal typical corporation. Uh, while our non-member generated earnings are taxable, in California, our, uh, the majority of our earnings are generated by member earnings, member patronage earnings, uh, which are not taxed at the cooperative level. Those are pass-through earnings that are taxed at the individual membership level. 